Hello, and welcome to this special uh, chapel service. It's the first week of Lent. And so we're going to spend a little time during these next few weeks leading up to Easter, uh, thinking about the themes of repentance and confession and coming near to God and those sorts of things. And we want to do that focusing on and reminding ourselves that we do that repentance and confession in full confidence that Jesus is our friend and wants to forgive us. So we're going to start with um, that theme today and we'll carry it through until uh, we have our uh, Holy Week and Easter service. So I hope that this will be helpful to you in the days to come. Let me begin with reading from scripture from the Old Testament from uh, the prophet Joel in chapter 2. And he wrote, Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your hearts, with fasting and weeping and with sorrow. Tear your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is merciful and compassionate, very patient, full of faithful love, and ready to forgive. So again, as we come to Lent and the period of weeping and fasting and confessing, we come in the confidence of God's forgiveness. Let's begin today, as we always do, with praying together the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So again, this is Lent. And um, the theme at my home church this year is darkest before the dawn, which seems so appropriate after the year that we have been through with uh, the COVID virus. And I read this brief introduction uh, from the church and I thought I'd share it with you because it spoke to me and maybe it will speak to you. We all know it's going to get better. It just has to. Within every moment of deep darkness, lies the certainty that dawn is coming. Many people have felt at one time or another, as have many biblical figures, that everything seems hopeless. Oftentimes, these moments of utter darkness tend to take place right before a great healing or deliverance or miracle changes everything for the better, sometimes in ways unimaginable. In this season of Lent, Many of us are experiencing some of these moments of darkness in all kinds of areas and in all kinds of ways. We invite you to join us to a special Lenten journey as we travel together through the darkness to reach the dawn of hope and the glory of Easter Sunday. So that's where we're headed during this Lenten journey uh, together. Let's begin by singing Amazing Grace because this reminds us that it is God's grace that makes it possible for us to know uh, the, that he is with us during the, dark, the greatest darkness before the dawn and will be with us all throughout uh, our lives. So let's join together in singing Amazing Grace. sing about God's amazing grace and just uh, to remember that through Lent that we are able to come to God in repentance assured of his forgiveness because of his amazing grace. Let's sing that first verse and then we'll sing when we've been there 10,000 years. Amazing grace how sweet the sound that saved a witch like me Blind, but now I see. When 
we've been there. When we've been there 10,000 years, right shining as the sun, we've no less days to sing God's praise than when we'd first begun. Our first hymn this morning is an old hymn, but one that um, I grew up singing, but may not be as familiar to you. I'm not sure. When I went to look for this in hymnals, um, current hymnals, uh, I couldn't find it. There were four hymnals that I looked in that are in current use today, and it was not in any of them. So I was a bit surprised. Uh, the name of the hymn is Nothing Between. And the theme of it is nothing between my soul and the Savior. And that's really what we're talking about, isn't it? In Lent is reflecting and, and looking at ourselves honestly. And what is there that's in the way, in between ourselves and the Savior? So I thought this might be a good uh, song for us during Lent. We may sing it. Uh, I think we're going to sing it every week, just as a reminder about what we're doing in Lent. So uh, let's sing Nothing Between My Soul and the Savior. Nothing between my soul and the Savior, not of this world's delusive dream. This morning, we uh, Bill and I came uh, into the chapel yesterday afternoon late and recorded our service. And when I got back upstairs, I realized that inadvertently the microphone had been turned off, so we uh, had no sound. And so I am down here early, early, early this morning before the activity begins in our chapel here at Lakewood Village, a recording, and I thought it was just too early to ask Bill to get up again. So uh, it's very early and I've not talked much until now. In fact, no one's up in my home. And uh, so you'll pardon my voice. It, will may, it may crack more than usual today. Uh, and we will miss Bill uh, dearly, but he'll be back with us for next week. So let me share with you, we sang the verse. Let me read the first, the second, and the fourth verses for you. And then we're gonna sing the first verse again. Nothing between my soul and my Savior, naught of this world's delusive dream. I have renounced all sinful pleasure. Jesus is mine. There's nothing between. Nothing between like worldly pleasure, habits of life, though harmless they seem, must not my heart from him ever sever. He is my all. There's nothing between. Nothing between even many hard trials, though the whole world against me convene, watching with prayer and much self-denial, I'll triumph at last. There's nothing between. So let's sing that again and remind ourselves that that's really where we're headed in Easter, uh, in Lent, as we approach Easter to uh, look at ourselves honestly and confess what might be between us and God. <laughs> Nothing between my soul and my Savior, not of this world's delusive dream. I have renounced all sin and pleasure. Jesus is mine. There's nothing between. Nothing between my soul and my Savior.
like my fingers aren't awake either. Our next hymn is Jesus Calls Us. This is an old hymn that I think you probably are familiar with. It was written uh, in 1852, so it's been around for a long, long time. And uh, it, it's based on uh, Jesus calling his disciples. The story is found in Matthew chapter 4, and uh, I want to read for you Matthew 4, 18 through 22. As he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And he said to them, follow me, and I will make you fish for people. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went from there, he saw two brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John, in the boat with their father Zebedee, mending their nets, and he called them, and immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. So the hymn, well, you'll, you'll hear phrases in this hymn that remind us of that story. And also, the stories of Jesus often take place in and around the Sea of Galilee and sometimes on the Sea of Galilee, where there were, it was um, common for storms to arise early. So there will be some, some phrases that remind us of the storms uh, that they were familiar with on the Sea of Galilee. So let me read to you the first verse just as a reminder. Jesus calls us o'er the tumult of our life's wild, restless sea. Day by day, his sweet voice sounded saying, Christian, follow me. Notice that it was addressed to Christians. Let's uh, sing that together. some notes, so I would try to remember what I want to do. Uh, let me read to you the second and fourth verses. I think you'll hear some more phrases that are uh, helpful to us. As of old, the apostles heard it by the Galilean lake, turned from home and toil and kindred, leaving all for Jesus' sake. And we just read that part in Matthew's gospel. And then verse four. This has five verses, by the way. Verse four. In our joys and in our sorrows, days of toil and hours of ease, still he calls in cares and pleasures, Christian, love me more than these. Let's sing the first verse again. Jesus calls us by the tumult of the lives, wild restless sea, day by day his sweet was sound. Our next hymn is another one that speaks of Jesus calling us softly and tenderly. Jesus is calling. This um, hymn reminds me of the words of Jesus himself in Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, where Jesus says to his disciples and all of those around and to us, come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy loads, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And Jesus is calling us to take our burdens. Let us give our burdens to him. And this reminds us of the hymn that we've sung a few times, take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. Let Jesus carry those burdens for us. So, um, Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling. Let's sing this verse together um, now. Watching and waiting, watching 
It's a wonderful song for us to remember, isn't it? He's watching, waiting and watching. I got them backwards when I sang them the first time, but he's waiting and watching, just ready for us to come home. So let's sing that one again. Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling for you and for me. song too. It was, it was also written in the mid-1800s. Uh, this song is Must Jesus Bear the Cross Alone? And as we move through Lent, we'll be, we'll be thinking and focusing about Jesus suffering on our behalf and then, of course, his dying on the cross for us. So we may sing some songs that have to do about the cross, and today may maybe just helps us start thinking about that. And this one says, must Jesus bear the cross alone and all the world go free? No, there's a cross for everyone and there's a cross for me. And we'll read some scripture uh, and think about that in just a moment. Uh, let's sing, must Jesus bear the cross alone? Verses 24 through 26, Jesus said, If any want to become my disciples, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what profit will it gain them if they gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? So there is a cross for everyone. We, we are called by Jesus to take up our cross, remembering that Jesus bore his cross and died on his cross for us. Must Jesus bear the cross alone? So let's uh, sing that song. I have to remind myself. Okay. Uh, what, what verses I want to uh, read for you and the verses that I have in Scripture and I've, I've read that for you. And then verse, the third verse of, <clears throat> excuse me, this hymn says, The consecrated cross I'll bear till death shall set me free. And then go home my crown to wear, for there's a crown for me. Let's sing that uh, first verse again. Must Jesus bear the cross about the cross and it's called beneath the cross of Jesus and it says beneath the cross of Jesus I fain would take my stand the shadow of a mighty rock within a weary land a home within the wilderness a rest upon the way from the burning of the noontide heat and the burden of the day that uh, staying within the shadow of the cross of Jesus is uh 
a special place for us. Let's uh, sing the first verse together. thy shadow for my abiding place. I ask no other sunshine than the sunshine of his face. Content to let the world go by to know no gain or loss. My sinful self, my only shame, my glory, all the cross. And that reminds us of what the Apostle Paul said when he said, I, I glory in nothing except the cross of Jesus and him crucified. So let's sing that first verse again. Beneath the cross of Jesus, I fain would take my stand. The shadow of a mighty rock within a weary land, a home within the wilderness. is a hymn that when I was growing up is one that we only sang as a as an invitation hymn. It was sung at the end of the service uh, as an invitation hymn. And uh, so that's what I always think of. But as I have grown older and thought more deeply about the verses and the, what the words say, and especially during Lent, um, I come even during the season of Lent as someone who's been a Christian for many, many years. I won't say how many years. Uh, just as I am without one plea, I still come only because of Jesus' death and resurrection and imaginable, unimaginable grace for us, and that we all need to come back. We all wander a bit and need to come back. So I've begun to think of this him in a little bit different way as I have gotten older. Let's sing the first verse, and then I'll share some scripture, and we'll talk about the other verses. Just as I am. chapter 55, this invitation to come. Ho, is that odd? I think that's odd. Ho, everyone who thirst, come to the waters, and you that have no money, come, buy, and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me and eat what is good and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear, come to me, listen, so that you may live. 
and I will make an everlasting covenant with you. So Jesus invites us to come. And uh, as it says, he will give us um, food to drink, uh, things to drink and food to eat without price. Uh, he offers to us his grace free, freely given to us. So I was thinking about this hymn, and I suspect, I guess, that you sang it as much as I did as an invitation hymn. And of course, we always sang all the verses. And if you uh, were able to attend a Billy Graham crusade or watch those on television uh, in years past, you know that they always ended with this hymn as well. And so um, they sang this hymn often over and over because as thousands came, it you know would take a long time for people to come forward. So um, I think you have probably sung it, uh, all the verses many times as I have. So I thought what I would do is just read the verses for us one at a time and then we'll sing them together because I think you know all of the verses to this hymn. And if I read the words to you, I think it will trigger that memory in your head. So we've sung the first verse just as I am. This is the second verse. Just as I am and waiting not to rid my soul of one dark blot, to thee whose blood can cleanse each spot, O Lamb of God, I come. Let's sing that one. Just as I am and waiting not to rid my soul of The third verse says, just as I am, though tossed about. Remember the storm that we talked about? Just as I am, though tossed about with many a conflict, many a doubt. We have doubts, don't we? We Lent is a good time to be honest about our doubts and to talk to God about them. Fightings and fears within and without. O Lamb of God, I come. Let's sing that. Just as I am, though tossed about with many a conflict, many a doubt, fightings and fears within, without, O Lamb of God, I And the last verse is that verse of great confidence. Just as I am, thou wilt receive. Wilt welcome, pardon, cleanse, relieve. Because thy promise I believe. O Lamb of God, I come. Let's sing that last verse. Just as I am, thou wilt receive. Wilt welcome, pardon. brings back lots of memories to me, and I bet it does uh, for you. This next song is All to Jesus I Surrender, and uh, even though we sang this sometimes, and sometimes this was an invitation hymn at the end of our service, but I remember singing this in my youth group. Do you? Uh, this was a song that we as teenagers sang a lot, and uh, it, it really meant a lot to me and spoke to me as a teenager, and so Maybe it will bring back some of those teenage memories, uh, memories uh, for you. All to Jesus I surrender. Let's, uh, let me see. I was going to, yes, I, I want to read the fourth verse for you in just a moment. I have to look down over here at my notes. I'm sorry, I've got too much spread out on the piano. Don't know how Bill does this every week. So all to Jesus I surrender. All to him I freely give. Thank you. 
Mark 10, verses 28 to 30. And Peter said to Jesus, Look, we have left everything and followed you. And Jesus said, Truly I tell you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or father or mother or children or fields for my sake and for the sake of the good news who will not receive a hundredfold now in this age Houses, brothers, sisters, mothers, children, fields with persecutions. Notice that was added in with persecutions and in the age to come eternal life. And Jesus said, as recorded in John chapter 12, very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, my Father will honor. And that reminds me when it talks about uh, the grain of wheat has to die, all to Jesus we have to surrender. It reminds me of the words of Paul that you will recall in the 12th chapter of Romans. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Now, if you grew up memorizing King James as I did, you'll remember that it says, which is your, which is your, re, which is a, oh my goodness, I've gone blank now. Present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. There we go, reasonable service. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. So this song reminds us that we surrender all uh, to Jesus, all to Jesus, I surrender. Uh, let's sing that verse again, and then I'll um, conclude this by reading the fourth stanza for us. All to Jesus. All to Jesus, I surrender all to him. says, all to Jesus I surrender. Lord, I give myself to thee. Fill me with thy love and power. Let thy blessing fall on me. Let's make that our prayer today. Amen. Our last hymn today is one that we have sung recently and one that is just uh, very special to me. I did not grow up singing this song, but learned it in later life and really loved the words as well as the melody to this hymn. It's Jesus, what a friend for sinners. And again, in Lent, we are doing that self-reflection and introspection, looking inside and seeing 
Are there things that are between us and God that we need to get rid of? And that we can do that in full confidence of his grace and his forgiveness because Jesus is our greatest friend. And the, the words to this hymn just really talk about that. In Luke chapter 15, verse 2, we read, Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to him. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. Yeah, he eats with us sinners, doesn't it? So let's sing this verse and then I'll share a little bit more with you. This is our last hymn today. Jesus, what a friend for sinners. Jesus, lover of my soul. Friends may fail me, foes assail me. He, my Savior, makes me fell and uh, and I didn't know which one it was and I was afraid it was the one for this but anyway let me uh, get where my papers oh, I'll just hold it so Jesus the friend for sinner who's who uh, was eating with the uh, tax collectors and the sinners and the church people didn't like that very much uh, and right after that immediately following that Jesus tells two uh, three very familiar, uh, short stories, uh, parables, we call them. And the three, of the three, the first one is the most familiar. It's the parable of the lost son or the prodigal son. And it says in uh, the scripture, uh, you know, let, me, let me remind you, the story is that the younger son, there were two brothers, and the younger son said to his dad, you know, I wish you were dead so I could have my inheritance now. Give me my money now, is essentially what he was saying. And so the father gave it to him. And the son went off and squandered away his money and then found himself feeding pigs. And for a Jewish boy, can you imagine being around pigs? And so one day the scripture says he came to himself, sort of came to his senses and decided that he would go home and beg his father's forgiveness and ask his father to hire him because he would be in better shape as a hired servant of his father than he was in the pigsty beating the pigs. And so the scripture continues. So he set off and went to his father. But while he was still far off, and don't you wonder, why was the father after all that time still looking for his son? But he was, wasn't he? While he was still far off, the father saw him and was filled with compassion, and he ran. And that was scandalous for a Jewish man to do. He ran and put his arms around him and kissed him, and he said, let us eat and celebrate, for this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found, and they began to celebrate. The second story, that Jesus told was the story about the lost sheep. And you'll remember that the shepherd had a hundred sheep. And when he was counting them at night, he found he only had 99. One had wandered off. And so the scripture says he left the 99 in the wilderness and went to look for the one that was lost. And when he found it, he came back rejoicing and asked the other shepherds, you know, join with me, rejoice with me if I found my sheep. And the scripture says, Jesus said, just so I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who need no repentance. 
And let me just remind you, do you, do you remember that old hymn, there were 90 and nine that safely lay in the shelter of the fold? And the scripture says he left them out in the wilderness. I wonder if there was some sort of a fold out there or not, but they could because they were in the wilderness. But the shepherd found the one that was lost and called everyone to rejoice with him. The last story is the one that's probably least familiar to us, and it is the story of the lost coin. And this was a lady who had 10 coins and she lost one. Now, they may have been 10 coins on a headdress of some sort, or they may have just been coins that she had, you know, that she had saved, maybe. I, I don't know. But she lost one. And you know, she probably didn't have a lot of extra money. So that, that coin was, that was a significant loss to her. And so she, it says she swept the whole house, seeking, searching for that lost, lost coin. And when she found it, she called all of her friends and neighbors and said, celebrate with me. I found my coin that was lost. And Jesus said, the scripture reads, I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Isn't that great? One sinner, you and I, when we repent, there is joy in heaven. The angels celebrate. So let's uh, think about this hymn uh, even again, and I'll, um, we'll sing it, and then I'll share the last two verses that I want to read with you, and we'll be at the end. I'm sorry, it's the end, isn't it? Jesus, what a friend for sinners. Jesus, what a friend for sinners. Jesus, lover of my soul. Oh, we're going to have to start over because I, I skipped a measure and I got really messed up on that one. So, And you know I don't play as well as Bill. Jesus, what a friend for sinners. Jesus, lover. Let's read the, I want to read for you the uh, second and um, last verses of this uh, great hymn for us. There are five verses. Jesus, what a strength in weakness. Let me hide myself in him. Tempted, tried, and sometimes failing, he my strength and victory wins. Jesus, I do now receive him. More than all in him I find. He has granted me forgiveness. I am his and he is mine. So those are great words for us to end with today. So it is time for us now to join in uh, reading or reciting together the 23rd Psalm. So will you join me in the 23rd Psalm? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So as we come to the end of this, our first week of Lent, I hope that this has been meaningful to you despite my uh, piano playing mistakes, and we'll look forward to be, uh, Bill being back with us next week. And I'll make sure that the microphone is turned on on the recording with Bill so that we don't, I don't have to do it again without him. I am so sorry that I did that, didn't notice that the microphone was turned off. 
But let's now receive the benediction and uh, then we'll sing God be with you till we meet again. May our Lord Jesus Christ himself, the God, the God and Father of us all who loved us and in his grace gave us eternal comfort and a good hope. Fill our hearts with courage and make us strong to do and say all that is good. Amen. Let's sing God is with God be with you till we meet again. God be with you till we meet again. Why his counsels guide uphold you with his sheep securely fold you? God be with you till we meet again. Till we be with you till we meet again.